So the liberal media has found a new way to spin the tsunami of bad news plaguing the administration. Just say everything is out of Joe's hands. When it comes to inflation, there's not much the president can do about it. There's not much that he can do about it, but at the same time, people's perception, and that's what's important. And the White House has found a new strategy to shield Biden from tough questions. A staffer dressed up as the Easter Bunny appears to interrupt the president and usher him away while he was talking about Afghanistan. Ha! ha. <laughs> All right, Greg. Who was in that Easter Bunny? I don't know, but finally he found uh, some hair he didn't want to sniff. <laughs> oh, that's very I good. Been that <laughs> that, well, oh, well, he's hugging him. Wait a minute, he's hugging him. You didn't see the whole thing. You don't thing. know who that is. That might be Kamala. Yeah, well, you know, that's the only way she can get what close to Susan Joe. Rice? I haven't seen you know? Susan Rice in a while. But, it, but it's like the, he, his slogan, I mean, that should be his campaign, campaign slogan, Joe Biden not much he can do because then it's like, you know, it's like because that's kind of where we are right now. We do know that he's not running this this show. He's just Who do you think up. is running the show? I don't know. But, I you know, I, I can't believe it's him because he seems so out of it all the time. I don't have I don't think he makes decisions. Doesn't. I think he gets up. He sits down. He enjoys wearing the jacket and the sunglasses. But uh, it's got to be this chief of staff. And God Ron well. Klain. Oh, what yeah. do you think, Sean? You're nodding your head. Who do you think's running the so place? I don't. I don't know who runs it, but which is my frustration. I, I elect a president to make sure I know that he's calling the ball, running the show. Um, but it's interesting, to Grace's point, that that they're trying to say it's not Joe Biden's fault. One point nine trillion dollars of a, of a COVID bill one year ago, massive amounts of money. You attack um, uh, American energy, oil and gas. I mean, if we went back to drill, baby, drill. Go for wells, pipelines, fracking. We're going to produce energy here. I mean, that would go a long way to reducing inflation, which is what, which is the number one issue for all Americans right now. Mm. All right. So, Dana, you know, they kept saying that re inflation was transitory, yeah. and then it was supply chain, then it was the pandemic, yeah. and then it was, uh, then it was Putin. Okay. So, what are they going to say, or what are they saying now? Given his numbers are probably as low as they've ever been. Well, all those things that you just listed, I call it the five inflation stages of grief, <laughs> because now they're finally getting to the place of acceptance, yeah. and acceptance is like, but I guess I don't have any control over it. I guess there's nothing I can do. You know, they ignored Larry Summers, the right. former Treasury Secretary, last year when he said, you guys, it's going to be a problem. The American Rescue Plan was so big, it put so much money in so quickly that now you have Democrats from the Obama era saying uh, it was too big. So that's how you helped fuel inflation there. They started to blame Putin. And now, but given all of this, Senator Warren is actually urging him to go even further left and to do more. So he... I actually think that it's letting President Biden off way too easy <laughs> to say that he's not in charge and that he's not running the show. I think that he is the one making decisions and they've been poor decisions. Okay. And in some cases, you have to say that perhaps maybe he needs to make some personnel changes, but he doesn't make He's either not making decisions or he's making bad decisions. All right. Well, what happens with the midterms, Jessica? I mean, if if there is, as they predict, a uh, a red wave in November, um, you know, what will they say? What will they say caused it? The Democrats. Losing Republicans. That, I mean, yeah, what, no, like, what will they say? That this is the historical trend, that a president who has control of the Senate and the House usually gets two years, and then they lose in huge fashion. Obama got the ACA. Biden got infrastructure and the American Rescue Plan. And they'll say, you know, when we went out with unemployment at 3.6 percent, which is the lowest that it's been in five decades. But don't you and think, Jessica, also that the far left will say it's because you didn't 100%. listen to us? Well, I would, and the moderates will say, oh, it's because you didn't listen to us. And then there will be a big fight. There, there will always, always be a fight. Be a fight. I, there <laughs> was someone said to me today, and it's such a good point. I'm sure it's all, it's occurred to us before. A party that has Bernie Sanders and Joe Manchin in it is too big. Those are not the same kind of people on any level. And the same thing existed when the Tea Party rose to power on the right. That it's or even Trump Republicans and Romney Republicans that don't have that much in common. But Elizabeth Warren, to your point, wrote an op-ed in The New York Times today, and half of it I disagreed with, but the first half I really agreed with, and she had this line, Democrats win elections when we show that we understand the painful economic realities facing Americans. And that's what Joe Biden did in 2020 with the health issue, with COVID-19. And Dems do have a chance to hold on to some of these seats and, and to maybe hold on to the Senate. Mitch McConnell even said, I really don't want to get ahead of my skis here. 
If you just say, I know the inflation is bad, I acknowledge it, these are the specific policies we're going to enact to try to help this, but it is a global problem. Okay, but so you think that the Democrats may have a chance to turn some of this around? Some of it, but the predictions could be up to 60 seats. The way way they wanted to uh, turn it around was to spend a $5 trillion Build Back Better bill. They want more spending that would make the problem even worse. So, I I mean, I I don't think they've got the right priorities to actually fix inflation. All their policies are making it worse. All right.